Hello, dear friends. My name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010 in Russia. Uh, today we are talking about mold, uh, mold illness, um, the symptoms that can be caused by mold exposure. And by the way, there can be a lot of different diseases connected to mold, especially those people. They go to doctors, they do a lot of tests, they get a lot of treatment, nothing helps, because the reason is not removed. They are still exposed to mold. And we will talk about sick building syndrome. This is their number of symptoms that occur because uh, the person is chronically exposed to mold and its toxins. So, let's get started. First of all, mold. Um, mold loves high humidity, bad ventilation and some cold surface where there will be condensation of uh, uh, humidity, of fluid. This is perfect for mold. It will grow, it will produce uh, spores and produce mycotoxins that will affect our bodies. The water damaged buildings are quite common and they can be the source of this mold exposure for human. And mycotoxins, they will be found uh, in uh, fluids of the human, in saliva, in blood, in urine and in internal organs. What does the mold love? Again, humidity, some leaks, some flooding, uh, poor ventilation and uh, condensation. That's why, first of all, you need to struggle with these things in, in your house. Again, this is the shower. You can see the mold grows here, mold grows here. This is the washing machine. Always remove the water here. Beautiful wall outside, but when you remove the wallpaper, you can see this. And this will produce mycotoxins and you will breathe it. That's why it's very important. This wallpaper won't protect from the flying mycotoxins. They are very microscopic. These are types of fungi. Aspergillus and penicillin are most common. They love different materials like dump plaster, cellulose, uh, like wooden stuff, papers, uh, some perishable food, waste, dust. It's very important. So it can eat pretty everything, you know, almost everything. Many professions are at risk of mold exposure, like all agriculturists, uh, agricultural workers, uh, the gardeners, archive workers, plumbers, aircon maintenance uh, workers. You can see it here if you wish. And here are the most common and uh, most uh, studied types of mycotoxins that will affect our body. What is the problem? Even small amounts of uh, mycotoxins and molds, but chronically, will cause a lot of problems. Next, 50% of fungal grows will be hidden. You think your apartment is nice and clean, but it's, it may be not. And mycotoxins are very small, they are smaller than spores, and they are, uh, are 1000 times more abundant. Mycotoxins may cause a variety of uh, diseases and symptoms, starting from some acute uh, toxicity, and um, fever maybe, allergy, and uh, up to different chronic diseases and even cancer. Next, mycotoxins can block the production of protein, DNA, RNA, disrupt mitochondrial function and cause immune disbalance. So, mycotoxins and spores are about allergy, immune dysfunction and even direct damage to the cells. You see that spore extracts were cytotoxic. And humans living in water-damaged building may have a lot of autoantibodies against their own organs, especially against their own nervous system. And they have more symptoms like allergies, pulmonary symptoms, neural system symptoms and immune dysfunction. They can cause uh, irritation and allergic symptoms from like eye burning, tearing, itching, nose problems, like uh, sneezing, secretion, uh, mucus, nasal congestion, uh, throat symptoms, uh, feeling of dryness and uh, mucus there, cause some coughing, skin irritation, dermatitis. This is very interesting. 
um, study showing two groups of uh, people. One was a um, family of nine members that moved to their water-damaged building with mold. And they started to have different uh, allergic symptoms, neurological, skin symptoms, and others. And the other cohort, uh, other group, is uh, 30 teachers and 50 students working in the same school. And uh, it had mold, and they had much more autoimmune conditions and cancers compared to general population. That is very interesting and very frightening. Here also, they say that uh, sick building syndrome is connected to different uh, allergy types and dysregulation of immune system, susceptibility to infections, low-grade uh, systemic inflammation in all the body, and different autoantibodies. You know this when a person stands up and he starts to have some heart pounding, very high uh, pulse, and maybe everything becomes dark in his eyes. This can be due to autonomic dysfunction. Our autonomic neural si nervous system is uh, the type of neural system that we cannot uh, control, but it controls our vascular tone, our heartbeat, our blood pressure, and uh, if it's affected or it's inflamed, maybe it's infected by, um, affected by mycotoxins, uh, this may cause this uh, dysregulation. I don't say that every time the reason is mold, but it is possible and there are some clear connections. Here they say that fatigue is very common in mold exposed individuals. Different uh, chemical sensitivity, different allergies, brain fog like in post-covid, arrhythmias and pains in muscles and skeleton. Some autoimmune and demyelinating diseases uh, may be connected to mold like Parkinson's disease or multiple sclerosis. Again, they may have this uh, increased uh, antibodies against their own neural tissue and also they have uh, more uh, sleep apnea, snor heavy snoring, asthma, insomnia, etc. Here they talk about the patients again with autonomic neural system dysregulation and arrhythmias because of mold. Here they talk about insomnia, uh, early awakenings, and uh, snoring due to mold exposure. Sometimes uh, mold may cause increase in IgE, uh, allergic antibodies and antiparasitic antibodies, and uh, they may activate actually mast cells, causing mast cell activation syndrome, looking like allergy plus some post-COVID. And there are, by the way, two interesting studies. For example, 119 participants exposed to mycotoxins they all demonstrating demyelination of their nerves and neuropathy, damage to neural system. Another study showed the same demyelination in optic nerve, meaning they will uh, have blurry vision, loss of visual acuity, visual problems. And what was interesting, uh, when they were treated with antifungal medications, they actually got better. That's very interesting. By the way, in the next video we will be talking about uh, diagnosis and about treatment and about measures what you should do to avoid this uh, mold growth at your place. Here you can see that gliotoxin produced by mold may cause, uh, may activate multiple sclerosis. It's a severe demyelinating disease. What was interesting, scientists compared autistic children with uh, healthy children and found out that in autistic children there was high exposure, high antibodies against mycotoxin. So, mycotoxins may be connected to autism development. That would be incredible. Also, ochratoxin is connected to damage to dopaminergic uh, neural cells in the brain, loss of which will cause Parkinson's symptoms. The same, mycotoxin induced inflammation in brain may cause Alzheimer's disease. The other disease, sporadic amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Only 5 to 10% are hereditary, all the other are just uh, in people who didn't have any family history of this disease. And it's very severe, it's progressing, it causes paralysis and death eventually. And it is associated with high secretion of glutamate from neurons. And what's interesting, verucarin and verucarol are two mold toxins. They also cause this 
increased glutamate secretion, increased by 1,300%. May it be connected? Well, it's also very interesting. One interesting study by Diana Pisa that in the brains of Alzheimer patients, they found fungal infection. Can it also be connected? Because we still don't know the reason why some people get Alzheimer's disease. Mold can cause exacerbation of uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, chronic bronchitis, emphysema. It can cause uh, hearing problems, tinnitus, ringing in the ears, vertigo, dizziness. It can cause dry mouth, eyes, memory loss, something uh, resembling post-COVID. They are associated with increased incidence of autoimmune diseases. Look here, rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosis podilitis, Chagrin's syndrome, psoriatic arthritis. There is connection to activation of sarcoidosis. We also don't know the reason of sarcoidosis. Can it be mold? Still needs to be investigated. Frequent misdiagnosis of such patients are chronic fatigue syndrome, chronic Lyme disease, anxiety, depression that is resistant to antidepressants, uh, pain in uh, different parts of the body, autoimmune diseases, problems with um, um, heart rate, with blood pressure, some demyelinated diseases, and positional orthostatic uh, tachycardia syndrome, meaning pa patient changes position, starts to heart pounding starts. And some people who have low immunity, for example, they have untreated uh, diabetes, or they have some uh, leukemias, they are getting chemotherapy or uh, prednisone dexamethasone or they have AIDS, they may be at risk of a very heavy and severe uh, infection by fungi, not just uh, chronic toxicity with uh, mycotoxins, but real infection. That's why don't underestimate mold. If you have any mold in your house, you must struggle with it as soon as possible. I want to thank everyone for uh, your attention, for your activity, for your comments, for your sharing. I want to thank everyone who is supporting this channel. If you want to join them, please see the link under this video. And I'm waiting for you in the next videos on uh, diagnosis and on uh, treatment and measures, what you can do if you think you can be exposed to mold or you see mold in your house. So, see you in the next video. Goodbye. Don't be